Welcome to part two of our four part series where we are designing a plastic injectable enclosure for Dr. Strange's all seeing eye of Agamotto. In this portion of the series, we'll take a close look at how our reference part file and the enclosure part file are related, and we'll use that relationship to our advantage to create the uniquely shaped cradle needed in our enclosure's ribs. We started in part one of this series by importing the eye of Agamotto part file, and recall we chose to import the part's surface bodies and absorbed sketches as well. Because we imported an existing part into this new part file, the two files will forever be linked. A change to the reference part will automatically update in our new part. So let's go to the Eye of Agamotto part file and create a new surface for us to use to create the complex cradle shape in our enclosure ribs. The bottom face of this artifact has some etched detail throughout, so I'm going to pull the history tree back to before that etched detail was applied. Now you can see we have a simplified surface on the bottom of the part, and we can use the Offset Surface tool to create an offset copy of this surface. In the Offset Surface Property Manager, simply select the face you want to offset, and set the offset dimension and direction, and click OK. Let's rename this surface in the Surface Bodies folder to Cradle Surface to make it easier to find in our other part file. And I'm going to pull my history tree back down to the bottom. Now, back in our enclosure file, you'll see in the Surface Bodies folder that this new surface has automatically become available. Let's use this surface to cut this cradle shape into our ribs. In the Surfaces tab of the Command Manager, you'll find the Cut with Surface command. In the Property Manager, select the surface you'd like to cut with and set the direction you'd like to make the cut. Keep in mind that the arrow on the surface will point towards the side you'll be cutting away. Click the green check mark and now we have our uniquely shaped cradle. Let's soften up the cradle and ribs with some fillets so we don't scratch our precious amulet. Here is a useful tip for adding fillets to multiple edges in one quick operation. Rather than selecting each edge you want to fillet, simply click one edge and hover over it until this toolbar pops up, which will help you select multiple edges. You'll see different options including the option to fillet all the parts edges, or only the edges associated with a recent operation, such as our cut with surface operation. Now we know the general shape of our artifact is symmetrical in the y-axis, so let's mirror the bottom half of this enclosure to begin working on the top half. And before proceeding, I'm going to create a nice dark red appearance to this enclosure. As you'll see, the top of the amulet has this rounded rim around the eye's opening, which we need to clear in the top half of our cradle. Again, we can use the power of SolidWorks file links to easily eliminate this interference. In this case, we're going to use a few of the absorbed sketches from our Eye of Agamotto file to create a swept cut in our enclosure. Under the Eye of Agamotto part, in the history tree, you'll see a sketches folder. I've renamed the sketches in the original file to make them easier to find. So let's unhide these two sketches for our swept cut. You'll see a profile sketch and a path sketch. I want to create a new profile sketch so I can control the offset and draft angle of our cut, but we can use this original sketch as a reference. In the sketch, I am using the Offset Entities tool to offset our cut 0.01 inches from the outside of the rim, and I'll draw in some 5 degree angled lines to make sure our draft angle is sufficient for plastic injection. Now 
Use the trim tool to cut away the unneeded lines and we'll ensure our angled lines are tangent with the offset arc. Let's hide our reference profile sketch and enter the swept cut command found in the command manager. Now let's select our new profile sketch and we can use the original sketch from our reference part as the path sketch. So we don't have to create a new path sketch in this file. In the options drop down, we want to make sure the minimum twist option is selected so our sketch to draft angle isn't affected too much. Again, we'll soften up this cut's edges with some fillets to prevent from scratching our artifact. So what's the main takeaway from this portion of the series? Always look for ways to use SolidWorks file relationships to your advantage to create shortcuts in various operations. So stay tuned for part three of our series, where we will be using the power of the all-seeing eye to create a portal to another world within SolidWorks, the world of fascinating features.